you might have seen this experiment about the Kuhlman papers before, but in this lecture I want to explain it in a more intuitive way. Imagine that we have some papers on a comb. Well, right now, the normal force because of the comb on the papers would oppose the gravity and therefore the papers wouldn't fall. If you put the papers under the comb, then the gravity would pull them down and they would fall on the ground. Well, right now, if I put the comb on these papers, they wouldn't be attached, they wouldn't come up. Obviously, the gravity is there. So, right now, I rub this comb on this piece of cloth and then I put the comb on these papers. And oddly enough, the papers get attached to the comb. Even though the gravity is pulling them down and there isn't a opposing normal force which opposes the gravity but still the papers stay there stay under the comb so there has to be something new in charge of this new field in charge of this new force therefore let's just call it charge anything that is in charge of this new force we just call it charge we don't have any more information about it the only thing that we know is that the field or the force caused by this charge is so strong that actually it opposes the pull of the whole planet of the gravity whatever this charge is would have some mass and we know that the mass can't be created out of nothing and since we saw at first the comb wouldn't attract the papers and then after rubbing it with the cloth it would attract the papers and since mass cannot be created and the charge cannot be created so it means from these observations that whatever this charge is has moved from that piece of cloth to the comb and therefore it was it was it then generated a field which would eventually just attract the paper that's something from then happened that we don't understand right now that attracted those papers so from these observations we know that that charge could move from one place to the other if we do another experiment and rub a glass rod with some silk or two glass rods with silk and then we just uh, approach them to one another we would see that they repel one another and if we, we also just do uh, as an example just rub a rubber rod with fur, we say that this time the glass and the rubber rod would attract one another. So from these observations, it is obvious that unlike the gravitational force that was always attracting, in this case, this force, this resulting force could be both attracting and repelling. Therefore, we say we have two kinds of charges that we just call them the positive and negative charges.